Welcome to MSPTDA video number eight. Hey, in this video, we're still talking about Power Query Group By. But wait a second. I thought that's what we did last video. Yes, but we want to see how to use Group By to either create a unique list with some aggregate calculation or this amazing ability, an aggregate calculation on consecutive occurrences. Now let's go look at a picture. Here's our data set. And if we group by type day and aggregate sales, this is what we saw last video. But guess what? We can change one of the settings, and instead of doing a unique list of all of the items from type day and then an aggregation, we can actually group up all of the work days that happen consecutively, get those two numbers for work day, then go on to weekend aggregate, holiday aggregate, and all of these work days. We will end up with whatever aggregate calculations we want for consecutive occurrences. So let's go over to table.group fourth argument, this sheet. There's our data set. I've already imported it as an Excel table, so I'm going to double click this query. There's the name of the query. I can come over to the left and click and open up my list of queries in this Excel workbook. Now you can either rename the query on the left or the right. I have this selected, so I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to rename this as Day Type Sales Global. Now, that will be the setting we use when we want to do a standard group by. I'm going to expand the column a bit there. Now we come over to Type Day, right click Group By. We definitely want to group by Type Day. We're going to do Total Sales, and then I'm going to arrow up to get the Sum function. And the column we want to sum is Sales. Now I'm going to click Advanced, and I want to do a second aggregation. I'm going to say Count Rows. Count Rows, that aggregation will be fine. Nothing there is needed. Now I click OK. There's our standard Group By unique list and our aggregations. Now let's come over to Applied Steps, click on Group Rows, come up to the Formula Bar. We'll expand. There's our Table.Group function. The first argument is always the previous step. The second argument is which column do you want to group by? And then the third argument is list within a list. There's our first aggregation. There's our second aggregation. And within the list within a list, the name of the column, calculation, and data type. It is the fourth argument that we want to look at. Now, if I come back up to group rows and double click that, I don't see anything in the user interface that allows me access to this fourth argument. So that's where we're going to cancel and just edit our M code. Now, before we edit our M code, we're going to learn something really important about M code and Power Query. Notice group rows. We click the icon, and it opens up our dialog box. Well, because there's no fourth argument available in the dialog box, when I edit this up here, that gear icon goes away and the only way we can edit the code is up in the formula bar or advanced editor. We will no longer be able to use that gear icon to get back to our dialog box. So fourth argument, I'm going to type comma. And this is called group kind. When I do dot, I can choose either global or local. Now global is the default. And watch what happens when I hit Enter. Nothing will happen here, but over in our Applied Steps, that gear icon will go away. So when I hit Enter, nothing happens here because that's the default. Over here, uh-oh, that is gone. No, no problem. We want to edit our code and use local. But for the time being, I want to leave groupkind.global. Now, if you really were using the default, we would not put this in. But just to illustrate, we're actually going to load this. Now I want to close and load this, so I'm going to click Close and Load. This has already been loaded, so when I click Close and Load, it's a connection only. To put the report in the sheet, I come over, right click, Load To to change the Load To location, Table. I want it in H16, click OK. 
Now I want to copy the code that generated this and change the fourth argument. So I come over, double click to open up the query editor. Over on the left, expand queries. Now I want to copy this. Right click. And there's two ways to copy, duplicate and reference. Now reference is not what we want. If I click reference, we can see up in the advanced editor, all it did was take the name of the query and repeat it. That means if I change anything here, it will be reflected in this second query. That's not what we want. Click Cancel. Click and Delete key, or right click Delete. We want right click Duplicate. What Duplicate does is if we look up into the Advanced Editor, it did exactly what we wanted. It duplicated all of the code. Now I'm going to click Cancel. Group rows is selected, so up in the formula bar. Group kind dot, double click global, and type local. When I hit Enter, that's it. Fourth argument local. Now we get group by consecutive occurrences. Now I want to come over F2 to rename this. Something like local and Enter. Now this has not been loaded, so I'm going to click close and load, close and load to table. Existing, we'll try L16, click OK. And there we have made aggregations based on consecutive occurrences. Now let's change this up. These two right here were not Workday. I'm going to hold Control. Neither were these two. This is something called, and I'm going to type in the active cell right here, donation. These are days we worked and donated everything to a good cause. Now to populate the item in the active cell to all the selected cells, I hold Control and Enter. Now I want to refresh all of our queries data, refresh all, or I can use the keyboard, Control Alt F5. And look at that. There's our unique list and aggregation. Here's our consecutive occurrences with aggregations, including donation, donation. All right, unique list and aggregation, that's global, the default. Aggregation based on consecutive occurrences. Use the fourth argument in table.group, global kind dot local. Now be sure and if you're interested, try the practice problem or the homework problems. Every single video in this series, or almost all of them, have problems that you could practice. And the one for this video is pretty fun. So check it out. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. And when you subscribe, you got to click that bell icon. YouTube used to notify everyone, but they don't do that anymore unless you click that bell icon. I even recently had to go through all my favorite YouTubers and click that bell icon. All right, next video, not 8.5, but video number 9 in this series, we'll talk all about M code. All right, we'll see you next video.